All right, so the difference between a, uh, an integrator or an engineer, right? Integrator, engineer, and a solutions architect, uh, developer, right? So if you, you know, one of the reasons that people are failing, and I, and I can tell you, man, I mean, if I'm being, if you wanna hear, I would say the number one takeaway for me from most of the conversations that we've had. I mean, like, and over the last month has probably been the greatest number of contacts that we've ever created that, I mean, this this week alone, John has scheduled me for probably a dozen meetings with people that we met through LinkedIn and stuff to answer questions for them, right? The number one question um, that we get is, how do you overcome like internal objections? So when, when I go, when, you, when I go, when, you know, the, someone will say, when I go to a client and I'm selling them on the value of IIoT and their eyes just glaze over, how do you overcome that? Well, the answer to that question is, I don't. I'm resigned to the fact that unless they get the right people internally, unless they have the right values, unless they have the right vision, they're gonna fail. So I, I don't, I, I'll, I'll make the best case. John will never put me in front of someone like that. I mean, our sales staff is never going to put me in front of a client who doesn't at least get it on a, a little tiny level, right? Um, that's the, the number one question. The number two question is, I get it. You know, hey man, I'm excited, love your videos, think it's amazing, I understand the value, I get it. Why is it I can't do it? Like, I mean, can you help me? There's so many people who are, and it's a lot of integrators. It's a lot of integrators saying, hey, how can, 4.0 solutions or IntelliC integration, you know, help us, bring us up to speed. And we are working with other integrators right now where we are essentially, we're going through the roadmap process. So if you watch that roadmap video and the A to Z, uh, digital transformation A to Z, we, we're going through that roadmap process together. We're teaching them how to do the evaluation and do the roadmap. But one of the things that I have to ask myself is, is the person that I'm talking to an integrator engineer developer, or are they potentially a solutions architect? So I wanna point out like what's the difference between the two. All right, so an integrator, an engineer, and a developer, they see the world as project-based, okay? That is, they have an SOW, they have deliverables, they have a schedule, and they have an end, okay? All, this is how integrators view, right? Integrator, engineer, developer, they're all project-based. A solutions architect, um, think of a solutions architect as um, a process manager. The fundamental difference between a process engineer and a controls engineer is that a controls and engineer eventually walks away. The process engineer is always coming back and looking for ways to improve. That's a solutions architect, okay? So the, the solutions architect is playing the long game, okay? They understand technology, not just existing technology, so existing, and emerging, okay? The solutions architects can tell you, they, they, they understand not only the technologies that we're using today, but they understand what all the emerging technologies are. The, not necessarily the products, they know the products. It's not the products, it's the underlying technology that these products are using to go to market, okay? A solutions architect understands that technology. Here's the other thing, a solutions architect knows the whole stack. All right, so the stack is PLC, HMI, SCADA, MES, ERP, and cloud, okay? Uh, an engineer, an integrator, engineer, and developer is gonna specialize in one or two of these layers, okay? You're gonna have engineers who are really good at writing PLC code and doing HMI, and even within the PLC at HMI, they, they may only write Rockwell ladder logic, for example. They, they may only use Studio 5000 and ladder logic. They may only develop in, uh, Easy Logic's Designer Pro. Uh, they may be an Automation Direct developer. They may only use Redline HMIs or Maple Systems HMIs, right? On the SCADA side, they may specialize in Aviva Wonderware. They may specialize in Factory Talk. The, the integrator engineer developer it, it specializes in one or two, you know, one or two of these layers. Go to a systems integrator, they're gonna have a business intelligence person. That business intelligence person is really only gonna know these two pieces, and if they know those two pieces, they're only gonna know SAP and, uh, and Wonderware MES or Factory Talk MES, right? So um, they're not gonna know everything. The solutions architect not only understands the entire stack, 
but they understand what best in class is at each layer in the stack. That's a solutions architect. Okay. You know, best in, the best thing, the best way to say it is, is that best in class is not necessarily one product. It's normally a range of products. Okay. So, and it, and it's a range of products for your specific environment. Best in class data would be ignition by inductive automation, factory studio by Tatsoft, uh, Indusoft is a best in class platform. Um, it, when it, when we get to the cloud based best in class would be Amazon Web Services, right? It's their IoT hub is best in class. When we go to ERP, some people are going to argue that SAP is best in class. Some people are, I don't know if anyone would argue that uh, Epicor is best in class, but there are people who are going to argue that Batchmaster is best in class ERP. Uh, when it comes to MES systems, some people are going to argue that that is Factory Talk's offering, that best in class would be Factory Talk. Some people would argue that the best in class would be Wonderware. Um, I would argue that the best in class MES system is going to fall somewhere between Traxxas, Factory Studio, or Ignition's offerings, somewhere, somewhere in that space. Okay. Um, the, the answer to your question is, is that a solutions architect has a list of best in class at every layer. And when they are architecting your digital transformation story, they're picking from their library of best in class. Okay. And, and what makes it best in class? Open architecture, user friendly pricing models, visionary leadership for the platforms and for the environments. Best in class has to do with performance, right? Why do, uh, for example, the Tossybox VPN solution. Why is Tossybox's VC VPN solution best in class? It's because its price point is correct. Their vision is correct in terms of their executive leadership is going in the right direction in terms and what, what's happening is they're taking industrial VPN to the cloud that this overarching cloud layer that allows you to give to essentially create virtual private networks on the fly. So you can connect the entire world if we want to they they've drawn a vector that's taking them in the right direction, but also, but most importantly, it's the ease of use and the performance. That's why Tossy box is best in class. Why is ignition or factory studio best in class at the SCADA layer? It takes three minutes, easy to download. Um, it's, co it's completely open. It's a platform for solving problems. It, spe it plays nicely with everything. That's what makes it best in class, okay? So, the, but the solutions architect knows the entire stack. Now, this is really what makes, this makes it hard to find solutions architects because most people have spent their whole career specializing in a layer in the stack. If you want to know how I ended up a solutions architect, it was my plan. My plan all along was to become a solutions architect. So when you look at the arc of my career, when I started out in mining, okay, as an electrician as an, and a controls engineer, I moved from mining and I went into the printing industry. So I went from a slow speed dirty process to a high speed dirty process where I was a controls engineer. Then I went from printing to the steel industry and I took a huge pay jump to go to the steel industry. And in fact, but I took a step back in title, but part of the plan was I needed to understand that process. I needed to understand how things worked on the floor. Then I went for, and I worked for an elite steel company for five years. Then I went from steel to automotive and I, I took a 50% pay cut to go from steel to automotive. But I went to automotive because the, the heavy industry challenges that you face in steel are not the same as the light industry challenges you pay, you play in the tier one automotive space, okay? Once I did that, once I did the automotive, I was ready now. And in the whole time I did PLC, HMI, SCADA, I, I had always been focused on, if you, if you look at Wonderware, I, I was a Wonderware Northeast guy. I was always focused on enterprise SCADA from a very early time. I mean, you're talking 2000, I was focused on using Wonderware in touch as an enterprise class solution. Okay, and, and uh, Joe Stanzik, who was my rep in, in Wonderware Northeast and Horsham PA, you know, he'll attest to that many times. In fact, he followed me through the arc of my career. And when I came down here to Dallas and became an integrator before I started my own firm, I reached out to Joe. I kept the, those, those relationships. So what, so, but what then what I did was I went, once I went to, from automotive, I went into systems integration and started doing applications in food and beverage and all other industries. And what I learned quickly was that not a lot of people work at every layer. They specialize at one of the layers. So what's happened is it takes a unique person to be a solutions architect for digital transformation and IIoT. And there just aren't a whole lot of people like this. I know, I know people like this and you know, we kind of gravitate together, but there's not many of them. Okay. Solutions architects, solution architects, they understand the politics 
And what do I mean there? To digitally transform a business, that is to digitally transform an organization or to architect an enterprise class solution, not only do you have to assess, assess where someone is and where they want to go, but you have to, you have to assess why is it that these really, really smart people can't get from where they are to where they want to go. And almost always, it has to do with internal politics. There's some type of internal resistance that you have to, you have to jump over. Okay, Solutions architects can do that. All right? Solutions architects have the ability to articulate a vision. The integrator, developer, and engineer doesn't do that. The, the, the integrator, developer, engineer can't get up on the whiteboard, talk to all the different players internally inside the organization, and, and draw a line from A to Z. That's where a solutions architect uh, is different. Here's the other thing a solutions architect is. They are agnostic, and this is the most important thing. A solutions architect is not married to any one technology. They are not married to any one piece of hardware. They're not married to any one solution. They are married to best in class. And best in class changes in and out. But best in class is based on the technology, and the solutions architect is committed to the long game and is committed to evolving organizations with as the technology evolves, right? That's what solutions architects do, right? Anyway, that's the difference between an integrator, an engineer, a developer, and a solutions architect.